Yeah, they do yeah. everything together. It's like built in, that oh, community. Yeah, it is. It's super tight knit. And I think a lot of it is because of the fact that you're going through so much together and you're so vulnerable. Yeah. You step out in front of that mat. And for me, that was the most intriguing part of it because I played football and baseball as a catcher in baseball. I was a center in football. I liked the in attention. I'm I, sure. I liked the focus on me. Right. I didn't get that in those other sports, but yeah. in wrestling, I was the quarterback on fourth down yeah. every time. Right. So for me, that was like the most intriguing part. Right. For some people, that scares them away. It scared me. That was what attracted me to it. But then you have, you go out and do it, and then your best friend goes out and does it. Right. And then, you know, it's a domino effect. Some kids coming off the mat being heartbroken. Some kids coming off the mat jumping for yeah. joy, yeah. all That's excited. Thing about it. You know, it's so many ups and downs with wrestling. And, then, and, you know, getting into the coaching world, that is probably the toughest part because... Guys, before we get started, just want to let you know, if you have any questions for us, please click the link below. You could ask us any questions via email, and we'll get back to you by the end of the episode. All right, guys, we're here on episode 26. We got very special guest, Lex Knapp, who I was able to meet in the youth wrestling community. Uh, we kind of crossed paths over there. We saw we had similar energy with the kids, and um, he's really become a, a, a good friend of mine, and like we're very happy to have him on. He just finished up wrestling season, so we've been talking about getting him on for a while. We want to make sure the season ended. He's the head coach at Donovan Catholic. He's also a financial advisor, a creative financial group, a creative financial yeah. group, and uh, we're super thrilled to have him. And Billy and Lex know each other too, so we're looking yeah, yeah. forward to a good episode here. I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, so. You got good stuff, Lex. I mean, for a while now, we've talked back and forth about financial planning and insurance, and obviously I've had some medical issues along the way. Luckily, we're able to work through those now, yeah. and uh, hopefully I could be a person. Cool. Yeah, thanks to all this dude's hard work. Guys, yeah. you know, looking like a million bucks these yeah. days from the first uh, time looking, I met Looking, I don't know. It, feeling, feeling like a million bucks. Right. If we're talking looking, looking, I don't know. If we're talking looking, I look under your eyes, and you could see a difference. When you and Lex yeah, first I'm met. fucking tired. <laughs> no, you look less tired. Yeah? That's my point, yeah. Uh, you look less tired. I'm just hiding the tired better. You know, but how you feeling? You feeling well, tired? No, truthfully, a lot more sleep yeah, or more okay. quality sleep. Yeah. Since this started, yeah. I've I've been taught or learned or realized again how important sleep is for recovery. Right. I bought the watch. We work on things. Reishi extract. Dave Seidenberg put me onto it. It actually helped. It improved my sleep score by like thirty percent, which it was terrible. It's still not great. But you're up. But I'm up. Good. And listen, similar to my physique, I'm not in your shape, but I'm getting there. Getting I mean, there, I'm baby. better than I was right. when you met me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, night and day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So For sure. thick, bro. We're For sure. working on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, you were, you were a little bit of thick Tracy back then. Yeah. I saw, I saw a before and after, though, recently. Yeah. It was you and Tommy Russo somewhere. Yeah. And then there was a pic. And then, like, we see you now, dude. Super proud of you for that, man. Yeah, I feel good. Good. And now I'm insurable, so. Beautiful. That's awesome. It's like the magic Did you guys have of, that combo? Like, we literally, now? I sent him my blood work. Yeah. My last yeah. set. And we can work through it. So That's I actually awesome, have man. blood work coming up again this week. That's And awesome. I'm anticipating it being even better than the last round. Yeah. That's awesome. So. Yeah, that life insurance product is a great, it seems to be a great product. Seems yeah, but I'm thing. fucked up. So, like, you know, I talk to people, and I said it last week. If anybody wants to see my documentation to prove it, I have paperwork that shows my triglycerides basically considered me dead, 3,000-plus sustained for two years. Uninsurable. The cutoff oh, yeah. is, right. what, 1,000? And they, at yeah. 2,000, they, like, <clears throat> consider you the walking dead. Right, yeah. No yeah. one would touch me right. for insurance. Right, right, right. Yeah. Period. There was not a conversation to be had. I'm oh, sure. And here I am. Yeah, well, he come a long way and, yeah. you know. But, yeah, it's, you know, great product and, uh, you know, very important to financial planning, which, you know, um, you know, our company, I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by a great company where we focus primarily, my focus is on business owners with business succession planning and estate planning. Yeah. And life insurance plays a big role in that, which, you know, I've had those discussions with both of you and, you know, you guys both realize the importance of it. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you do hit those hurdles where people have health problems where they can't get the coverage, and we got to, you know, find audibles to go yeah. to. But, you know, Billy's gotten himself in some good shape here. I know we were just right. talking about Robbie Leakes. I wish I did Robbie it 10 Leakes years ago, and, though. It's fine. I wish I started. I, I should have listened to a—my younger self, I wish I had Lex Knapp 
come and educate me on the benefits of this. It well, happens. I, I was, uh, it's I was, so foreign to me at that age. Oh, like, yeah. Well, the f I'm not dying tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We you have know? a chart where we actually even, not even as much the life insurance, but even just investing, like showing the benefit of starting yeah. at 25 versus 30. For sure. Like a five-year gap, and, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but it makes up hundreds of thousands of dollars over the long run. I'm and sure. But, you know, I was just talking to my friend who lives down in Texas, and um, we were having, like, a great conversation. And, you know, we were pretty much saying that, like, the best way for guys like us or, you know, maybe guys overall to, like, learn something is, like, to fuck it up. I'm the you guy know, that whether it's like the fire. Racking you know up hot. your credit card debt and yeah. realizing, like, holy shit, this is not good for me. Or, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. Oh, yeah. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, substances, whatever it may be, the best, the easiest way for us to learn is to kind of go through it. And there were a lot of things that, that people were saying to me at those age, but I just didn't get it. I didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. They And they were good people that I trusted, but I just, you know, the, it, 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 it wasn't the right sense. time. It wasn't yeah, the right yeah. time. So yeah, you can look back and say, oh, I missed out on, you know, hundreds of thousands in, in life insurance, but at least you're doing it now. You're doing it now yeah. and you're moving forward. Yeah, and that's but all I'm, only lucky. I'm lucky that I can do it now right. because by all strokes, I shouldn't be able to. I right. mean, I went to doctors. I was medicated. Things changed a little bit, but not drastically. Right. Today, I'm not on any medication for diabetes. I'm not on an, any lipid medication or triglyceride. None of it. No That's hard wild. medication. I fucked around with my workouts with Robbie. Robbie analyzed my diet and what I was taking in. And, you know, the way I saw it was if he can make an adjustment here mm. and it could give me an improvement – why do I need the doctor to make adjustments to the medication? Right. They were doing the same thing. They, you know, adjust here, adjust yeah. there, add this, add that. Uh -huh. Robbie just added some protein, took away some carbs, added a little bit of this, yeah. added a little bit of that. And now, I mean, you saw my blood work. Oh, yeah. It's not great. It's pretty yeah. damn good. It's though. a good point, though. For, yeah. Compared to what it was, it's amazing. Yeah. I've been really realizing as of late that, like, our stomachs and our brains – are connected. Yeah. And like when I was struggling mentally, I might not have been putting good shit in my belly. So now I've been really focused yeah. and aware. A Seidenberg, once again, I've been hitting the blueberries. Yeah. They say eggs have like immense benefit for your brain and different things. But for a long time, they were saying, watch out for the eggs, the cholesterol, only eat the whites. You know, so we learned kind of some things. They would yeah. say, you know, breakfast, most important meal of the day. I don't eat until 3 p.m. now. Yeah. There's been, like, immense benefits to that. Um, so so my point is, like, whatever we're putting in our bellies can really have an adverse on, like, our thoughts and our mind. And uh, those two go hand in hand. And, and just like you and Robbie are doing with tweaking the diet and yeah. stuff, you could physically see the difference. But I'm sure mentally putting more clean shit in your well, body is feeling that. better. I've told you. I was a big stress eater. Right. Mm. I'm stressed. I'm banging out mm. fast breaks. Right. Sitting there yeah. all day eating them. I mean, at that moment... Yeah, you feel great down in a, a Reese's. Did you get like post overeating? Like yeah, bro, depression I, like, or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, you'd be like what yeah. the fuck are you doing? You just, just ate thing. four fucking Reese's fast breaks <laughs> right. in an hour. Like, what are you thinking? Yeah, in that hour, it was so amazing. And the food in, in the United States these days, or I don't know if it's nation, I don't know if it's worldwide or, or nationwide, but they say that like the stress eating and stuff, like food is like the worst addiction that we currently have. Oh, it's yeah. tough. And it's like holy shit. There's all these addictions going on out here on a daily basis, and like the food seems well, to be the how most prevalent. It is. It's so. It, yeah. Especially oh, to eat yeah. unhealthy. Oh, yeah. Look at where we are right That's the now. the only option. What is next door to us? Right here. Right. We got McDonald's. And it's we the got cheapest Taco Bell solution right here. Cheapest, eating. fastest, yeah. most accessible. Yeah. And yeah. I was, I you was guys talk about it. Yeah, Chick Fil A. Oh, yeah, I was uh, buying yeah. into Chick Fil A. I hope you're out. More, I'm out. Yeah. Robbie sent me a thing. Chick Fil A's yeah. chicken sandwich has yeah. 47 ingredients. They got us in the real chicken. They got right. us. Abby and I in were, the real chicken. Right. Vince, that yeah. it was good quality stuff. No, nope. like we we're yeah. like, oh, we're only going Chick Fil A because yeah. yeah. that's what people tell you, right? That's yeah. the healthiest fast food, and you just go with it. But you know, it goes back to you. I've, you know, I watch your guys' show every week, and you guys talk about the coping mechanisms. Like right. that is one of the ones that a lot of people go to. That's yeah. really not that great. And yeah. it's really not much different than alcohol or drugs or no, anything worse. else. You know? It's worse because it's so yeah. readily available. Yeah. Right. I could walk into any quick check. I could walk into any Wawa. I could be 10 years old or 30 years old. And I'm conditioning myself as a young man right. at, let's say, 10 years old. Uh, I feel like shit. Let me have a Snickers bar or whatever. Right. And yeah. now 
I go to get gas. I walk in the store to get a coffee. Boom, I'm buying a fast break. I'm buying well, four right fast breaks. They're right there at the register. They're right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't just walk into a store and buy heroin. You can't just walk into a convenience right. store at 15 years old and buy right. beer. Yeah. It's just not to eat unhealthy and to stress eat. Yeah. It's right there. It's one it's, of those oh, yeah. things, like, it's hard. It, it, it's tough being an adult. Like, I remember being a kid. It was like you were pretty limited on, like, especially when you had no driver's license. It was like, oh, what are we having for yeah, dinner? Right. Or it's like now it's like, oh, I got money. I got a car. Like, yeah. we're going here. Then we're going oh, there. When I first got my license, car. dude, I was at fucking Burger King. I had every There was one right across from Freehold Township. I was at Burger King. I was ripping uh, breakfast sandwiches, 7-Eleven. I get a yeah. coffee, get, like, whatever else they had. First thing Vending I did when I got my license, school. I picked up Paulie DeRosa and we went directly to McDonald's on Route 9 and Freehold yeah. at the drive through yeah. that was our big move for the day yep. but now you don't even need the car you could just that go on the phone DoorDash door door right. I just DoorDash yeah, uh, Fiji water oh yeah did you get your Red Bulls here? did you get your Red Bulls too <laughs> I got a Red Bull yeah. nice get it you can bring it out um, alright yeah, so, let's talk about all the clean shit I'm eating. I'm going to down a Red Bull right now. Hey, man, <laughs> pick and choose, dude. We ain't perfect. Well, it's to be all fair, good. I'm a little under the weather. I've been battling a staff infection and a tattoo for like three months that came back today. So you're going to shotgun a Red Bull on uh, camera? And that's like the biggest. No, I'm just a little tired, <laughs> so, so I needed to we'll wake up a little up, bit. Yeah. Uh, so, Lex, when we pretty much first met, I was coaching at the youth level in Howell. You were coaching at the youth level in Lacey. And, like, right away, dude, that day... I don't even remember what happened. Like, I, yeah. I, I remember you, you know, wrestling. Like, we never met or anything, but I remember you. I remember you went to Rutgers and remember you being a stud. But there was something about that dual meet that day that we kind of just connected without yeah. even talking to each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember it. And, um, you know, I think, you know, you like the shore wrestling community is so tight knit. Yeah. And, like, you know, I recognize you from, you were coaching at Freehold Township when yes. I was wrestling at That's Lacey. Right. And like, you know, just recognizing your face. And then I was, I became familiar with the Howell Predator Club because right. I became tight with Rob Morello. Yep. And, uh, you know, it just got, oh. to, then Morello went out, you came in and, you know, just kind of naturally hit it off. Yeah. And, um, you know, from that point on, you know, just got closer over the years between personal life, business, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, developed a really nice friendship here. And I'm fortunate enough where a lot of my friendships nowadays stem from wrestling. Yeah, you definitely. Know? Um, it's really shaped my life more than anything in this world. Yeah. Um, that goes for my family even, you know. Yep. I mean, I started at four years old. Yeah. Our weekends were spent Friday night, go way in for a tournament on Saturday, mm -hmm. wrestle a tournament on Saturday, go way in for a tournament Saturday night for Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was my mom, my dad, my brother, and I up and down in a minivan traveling, the, you know, the country, the state, wherever. You guys always have those memories. Yeah, though. and, you know, it's, um, you know, Several of my groomsmen in my wedding, yep. wrestling, you know, Definitely. like it's just, you know, that community, it's so tight knit and, and it's just that bond that you connect with over what is, you know, as we know, and you're learning through your son being in the sport, it's grueling. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I honestly think we're pretty sick people to be involved in it. Because, Even just to sign up, you got to be yeah, a little Yeah, you got to be a little well, especially crazy. Especially when you sign up a young kid for it. For sure. <laughs> like, like I mean, I'm going to be fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I look at my kid and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking, man? Yeah, like, yeah, but, bro, I'm asking this six-year-old. Now he's six. He did his first tournaments this year, first matches this year. And I'm literally asking you to go out and agree to basically have combat with another six-year-old. Yeah, like, yeah. before. Have combat. You got to be wired Take a little fucked after. up to expect your six-year-old to do it. But yeah, if you provide your kid with the right coaches and the right mindset, for me, you'll be all right. Like, I'm not asking my kid to go out there, be an animal, and then go to school and be an animal. Right. He's got an amazing coach in Pete who lays a great example. We're here to wrestle. You got out there. You give it your all. But at school, you're an example. You sit with the kid that no one's no one's sitting at sit, sitting with yeah, at lunch. Right. You don't bully people. You stand up for kids that are being bullied. Yeah. So if you find that balance, I don't need him to be an animal. Yeah. I no. need him to be controlled. I feel like you're kind of describing Frankie Edgar again because it's like yeah, he was a legit cage fighter. Yeah. Right. Like you know, which is way more intense than wrestling. You touch gloves. Ding, ding, ding. It's on. Yeah. Limited rules overall. Yeah. And then you see the guy walking around like the humble savage that he is, the humble champ. He ain't looking yeah. for fights. Soft-spoken. He's going to fight. Yeah, yeah, no. Saying hello. But that's hey, great dad. about right. his coaching yeah. up through the years, you know, with a, oh, yeah. a guy like you or a guy like there. you by somebody's side, like my son. Maybe he winds up a Donovan Catholic. I don't know. But right now, he's with Pete Riley. 
I haven't seen him in a while. You can't even be saying. No, he's that's a because Ryan, Sundays though. we've had tournaments, <laughs> and this Sunday wasn't there. My friend Patrick came up from Maryland. Bro, I haven't so seen we him in months. We had tournaments every Sunday. I know. I remember every that. Sunday. I'm so yeah. glad. I'm so yeah. glad that you guys all found that group and kind of traveled together. Yeah, we did great. Those car rides that you guys are on is the same thing that Lex oh, described. Yeah. And so yeah. when Lex or when when, when Max is a full-on adult and dad, he's going to remember those days, hey, me and my dad got in the car, we traveled. You know what? For him right now, it's not even about the time with the family. I mean, obviously he likes that, but but that's part of it. They got such a good little crew between him, Rocco, Jack Jack, Roman, they uh they run around that place uh, any wherever they are. Oh, yeah. They're at the mats for everybody's match as long as they can be. Doesn't matter the outcome, they just support each other and it is adorable. And Dave Porta is the biggest fan of the little crew we have. Oh, definitely. Because he he doesn't really have that with his older boy. Right. All the kids that he's wrestling with are older. So right. he's going to be left older out a little from bit. Other towns yeah. And, yeah. Now we're all together. Yeah. No. It's amazing. And they're, and, and they're playing football together, too. Yeah. They do yeah. everything together. It's yeah. like built in that oh, community. Yeah, it is. It's super tight knit. And I think a lot of it is because of the fact that you're going through so much together. Yeah. And you're so vulnerable, yeah. like oh, yeah. in front of each other. Like you step out in front of that mat. And for me, that was the most intriguing part of it. Mm. Because I played football and baseball as a catcher in baseball. I was a center in football. Not glorified positions by any means. I liked the attention. I I liked the focus on me. I didn't get that in those other sports. But in wrestling, I was the quarterback on fourth down every time. Right. So for me, that was like the most intriguing part. Right. For some people, that scares them away. It scared me. But, you know, um, that was what attracted me to it. But then you have, you go out and do it, and then your best friend goes out and does it. Right. And then, you know, it's a domino effect. Some kids coming off the mat being heartbroken. Some kids coming off the mat jumping for yeah, joy, yeah, all that's excited. That's thing about it. You know, it's so many ups and downs with, uh, with wrestling. And, then, and, you know, getting into the coaching world, that is probably the toughest part of it because – you know, when you compete, yeah, you want your buddies to do well, but your focus is on your match. Right. When you're coaching, there's 14 matches that your same energy yeah. you're putting into as a competitor, you're putting into every one of those. Yeah. And I was just talking um, to my dad about it at the state tournament. We had my heavyweight wrestling in the wrestlebacks. He loses, and I I wrestled with my heavyweight every day. We mm. developed a really strong bond. We're super tight. His career just came to an end. His goals are over. He's crying. I'm crushed. Yeah. yeah. I have Kurt Wayner on deck wrestling in the state quarterfinals. Yeah, you got to put it back 12 together. 12 minutes. Yeah. And then I have Sawyer on deck. About to be up again. After Kurt. Yeah. So I'm going from my heavyweight who's in tears. I'm holding back my tears because I'm imagine. devastated for this kid. Yeah. I got to run over to Kurt, get him ready for his match. He wins, but I can't get too high on that because Sawyer's up next. Yeah. And he's wrestling the, def- uh, the kid who ends up winning the state title. Right. He loses that match. Now I got to gather my thoughts because Sawyer is one win away from the podium and he's yeah. one loss away from his career being over and his dreams being crushed. There's and so much energy being exerted oh as a God. coach. It's, well, oh it's a thankless gosh. job. Especially sure. when you're down there in AC, yeah. just like you, like exactly what you explained. Like, And you probably stayed up late that night and you were up early the next oh, day and you're not even exhausting. eating good food. You didn't yeah. take any time for yourself. Yeah. And there's just such an emotional roller yeah. coaster. The, the high moments are a lot of emotion. The yeah. low moments, like... All these ups and downs, like the coach is feeling all that. And like yeah, you can't the- really let the kid, like you couldn't let Kurt know that you were just so emotional no. under the bleachers. Well, like you say. had to shift your poker face to like, hey, let's get this. Yeah, you, you can't know? even really deal with the emotion at that moment. Right. So like no. it would keep me up late while I was down there. Yeah. Yes. And I was gonna yes. say, like, after the day's done. And then after the tournament's done, now you have a time to reflect. Yeah. Did it hit harder or, like, was it better that it, you couldn't really deal with you it know, in the moment? Uh, that's a great question yeah. because, like, that night, yeah. Because the other thing is later that night, I, I have Sawyer gets on the podium that day, a little bit later in the day. Mm-hmm. Kurt wins his quarterfinal. He's wrestling in the state semis at 7 o'clock that night, 10,000 people in Boardwalk Hall with the opportunity to go to the state final. So I still don't get to really, like— get that emotional yeah. dump until like maybe 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And then you're like, holy shit, I'm coaching in the state finals tomorrow. Right. But at the same time, I'm devastated because this kid who I worked with every single day and put his heart and soul yeah. into this, 
I'm thinking, what could have I done better of for course. this kid? That had to be a real confusing feeling. It's tough, and I yeah. still like I still deal with it. Like yeah. I after Kurt's match, Kurt, Kurt wrestles the number one kid in the country in the state finals. Now, did we know it was unlikely he's going to win that match? Sure. Um, as a coach, though, and knowing Kurt, yeah. I'm not counting him out at no, all. No. Well, you're not going to show up expecting to lose. No, no not, I, especially I, not on that stage. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, for me, some, some matchups in the final. This kid that he's talking about, like you could bet the house on. He he could have He could have yeah, put his chips you, all in. If you made it to the final, there's a reason you made yeah. it to the final. It's yeah. not like like when Max wrestled his first tournament. Granted, he's six. We went there with zero expectation. Right. I didn't expect to win. He came home with second place. Yeah. I'm good with it. Yeah. But. What I'm saying is at that stage, you're not expecting to lose. I expected no. to lose at six. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, like based on this kid, I mean, he's number one kid in the country. He hasn't been scored on all year. We actually, okay. we, Anthony we, Knox, he's an yeah, absolute he's a freak. freak. He's going to Cornell. He's Three a time stud. state champ. I mean, absolute stud. But it's still, we're going into it like, you know what? Kurt's really good on top. Mm -hmm. He gets one takedown, one opportunity yep. to get on top. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe we could turn him. Maybe we could yeah. pin him. Yeah. You got Yo. those thoughts going on. Now you're yeah. kind of telling him, like, hey, you know, your top game is real strong. You get one takedown. You right. have decent defense. Like, you're in this. So you're going after that match even, like, still thinking back on it and reflecting, like, what could we have done differently? Like, we yeah. had choice in the second period. We coached it kind of like a regular match. We chose bottom. Probably the right move, but looking back, should we have deferred? So we had choice in the third. We end up getting a takedown in the third. We end up on top. So great. But now, like, it's still the wheels are spinning. Would it have been better to have two opportunities on top? Dude, you sound so much like Coach Morris to me. It is so crazy. I mean, he still goes back. Coach Morris from Johnson & Wales made a monster impact on my life. They just took fourth at D3s. But yeah, they had a great he tournament. still goes back to, like, 06. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I moved on with my life, man. Like, he's like, nah, we should have done that. We should have done that. I'm like, dude, it's over with. Like, yeah. he, I always trusted you regardless. He's like, oh, we should have cut that kid. Like, whatever the example was, like, it's it's easy as a coach to be that Monday morning quarterback yeah, after you the fact. Go but with that a little you put bit. it all out I, there. I'll That's tell you what, I, I struggle with it even from my own career. I, my, I took second in the state. And my goal, my parents save everything I have. They have a picture that I drew in first grade. You had to do, what do you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to be a state champ. That's what I wrote first grade. That's my lifelong goal. Damn. I end up taking second. There's still times where I think, like, holy shit, I'm never going to be a state champ. And it's, okay, it's tough to, like, I'm totally content with my career. I know I did everything I could. Mm -hmm. That's the, I was never the most talented kid, but I worked my ass off. There and I know that, and I could put my head on the pillow at night knowing that. Yeah. But, like, even – so the kid I beat in the state semis, I just connected with him on LinkedIn. He's a business owner out in West Jersey. He messages me. He goes, you know, I still think about our match well, at least once a month. I mean, I, that was in you're like, oh, I think about at least once a day, you jerk. <laughs> like, I just thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking 2012. Yeah. And, like, it's just crazy the way this shit sticks with you because of, you know, we don't do this for the money. There's no professional yeah. league. Yeah, you know, the college guys are getting paid a little bit now, and they have the RTCs, which is great for the sport, and I yeah. love that. But very few people are ever going to make a living off of wrestling. Right. We're doing this just for the passion and yep. for what our goals are. And it it definitely, you know, when you put that much effort into it, it it sticks with you. Now, I don't have nearly as much like guilt or regret as I do good memories and there you go. and gratefulness and gratitude for what I got out of the sport between um, you know, the memories and time I've spent with my family the friends that I've made through this sport, the connections I made through this sport, how it's grown to, you know, people like Pete and then to you and then, uh, you know, who you guys recently connected, Matty Trost. Yeah, who, Matt's who I, an awesome guy. Today. I'm looking forward to watching Yeah, that. great dude. Yeah, I've never, I never would have met him without this sport. Exactly. Uh, Mark Gray, who I met in sixth, uh, sixth grade, Team New Jersey, he ends up moving down to Tom's River and ends up, ends up being my assistant coach. Yep. And we're great friends now That's because awesome. of this sport. So I don't think I've ever met him, but I've heard nothing but great things about that. Mark guy. is Zach speaks highly. Awesome. He seems like a class act. He, the whole community yeah. is, is on board with him. Super good dude. Yeah. Um, had an unbelievable career. Was the number one recruit in the country in my grade. Uh, yeah. Went on to Cornell. He was a two-time fifth in the world in the cadet worlds. Um, 
multiple time NCAA qualifier and great coach. Yeah, and really. now and now he's doing some MMA stuff, and he's pretty much like a rising yeah rising you know? star in yeah. MMA. He's undefeated. Like Did he That's just awesome. fight the weekend of the he state was supposed tournament? To. He, opponent, he was supposed to because yeah. Matt was supposed to sponsor him. Yes, right. Because yes. I sponsored a kid named Cole Cameron. That's right. Oh yeah, who was a Howell wrestler. Cole, he was going to be on that same card fought. down there. Yeah, they were on was, the same. How car. was he going to pull those off as a coach, dude? He, he, that would be hilarious, bro. He was though. He was on the card. That would be great. He's a savage. Yeah, he was going to. Uh, weigh in Thursday. Right. Come coach after weigh ins. Right. Coach come, all day. Come coach all day Friday and then go fight Friday night and then be back for Saturday to coach. I love it. I mean, uh, and I'll tell you, I've never seen a dude who has uh, maybe Frankie. Frankie's probably the exception. Mm -hmm. um, Mark's like, endurance and his mindset and his mental toughness it's unmatched Good it's though. it's it you could see why he's so successful in that's everything awesome. he does that's awesome. and he's been a great influence on myself uh as a coach we're I'm very sure. like-minded we're both pretty intense coaches i can imagine um very uh very good with the kids you yeah. know pushes them to their limits because our thing is not everyone's going to be a state champ but everyone can work like one yeah right. and that's the thing that we demand in our room is effort yeah. You know, hey, you might be a first-year wrestler. Your goal might be to be a varsity wrestler right. and break the lineup. Great. You're going to work your ass off to do it, though. Hell yeah. You're not just going to show up and be a part of the team and get the sweatshirt and hang out. You're yeah. going to either be all in or all out. So, Absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's been a wild ride, you know, through the sport and the ups and downs. But, you know, I'm, I'm a better person for it. I know, 100%. you know, what it has meant to my life. Just, you know, I, I use the example all the time. I work with uh, thousands of clients, right? I can go in and sit down with them in a boardroom or a conference room and do a presentation because I wrestled on one mat in front of 10,000 people with my life rack. dream on the line. Right. And, you know, what's more vulnerable than that? What's more, like, You're stressful right. than that? It's so, so true. you know, I apply that to my life. When shit gets tough, you know, I think back to that. Hey, I've gone through worse. 100%. I know I have. you for who you are today. For Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know. There was... um. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 wild to me that you say that you're an intense coach, and I'm I'm sure you are. It's just hard to picture because you're always so even keeled. I I heard you say it on the last episode, and this is the analogy I used. I'm a duck. Okay. The feet are going a million miles an I hour. I knew where he was going. By the way, I knew where he was going. I've yeah. used that a hundred times. That is me, and yeah. I I try to stay even keel. My one downfall is. I am like a rubber band. Like I snap both ways. Like mm. I can get low on the lows. I can get high I'm on at. the highs. Well, that's, me, yeah. that's where I'm and, at. And I got a little bit of a temper. You got to um, kind of embrace it though. Right. But do you think you it's know? a temper? Because I have what I will, some people will mistake as a temper. And they'll mistake me yelling or being aggressive when it's just passion. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm not yelling at you because I'm being aggressive. I'm yelling at you because the topic that we're Get discussing, I'm passionate 100%. about. 100%. Right. And that's how I'm conveying my level of passion. I don't want to fight. Yeah, I don't right. want to yell at you. Yeah. But that's how it's coming off. 100%. I'm extremely passionate. And I'm passionate, too, like, in regards to the people that, you know, I care about. Right. And, I agree. And, yeah, I deal with this with my wife. Like, there's times where she thinks I'm getting pissed off. And right. I'm like... You're like, nah, uh, no, like, what? you know, like we're talking, feeling this, especially, man. Passion. well, especially with like the baby now, like right. there's moments where new parents, you know, Ooh, eight Fucking month old, scary Ooh, times, wait. bro. She's asking me, you know, you think there's something wrong? Like, what should we do? I'm yeah. like, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm right. like, I'm, and then eventually it's like, I don't fucking know. Like, you don't know. I don't know. Like, I know. <laughs> I know you're looking Let's for me Google. for answers. You're painting the picture. But, yeah. You're you know, painting the picture. And, and but... I feel bad, like, looking back, and I'm like, shit, you know, I shouldn't have snapped like that. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm as worked up as you, and I'm trying to be strong for I'm you here. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know either. If I, I did, I'd go up there and make you know, whatever make her I stop need to crying. do. And like, <laughs> yeah. My wife will do this thing. Like, when, we, when our kids were really young and we were new parents, She'll ask me, like, repeatedly what my opinion is if, if there's a problem. Right. Mm. Bro, we both have discussed that neither one of us know anything. Right. right. We've Just been stop, parents for three Stop months, asking. You know? You've asked me 15 times in six fucking minutes. The answer is yeah. not going to change. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know shit. Oh, no. I didn't just oh, yeah. become, like, a genius at parenting. Right. So it gets frustrating. And you're talking about something yeah. that means the world to you and your kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> That no, is, right. uh, I think that's where coaching and then parenting, like, I 
obviously it's not the same. I'm dealing with teenagers versus a uh, uh, infant. Yeah. But the the overlapping of like trying to like problem solve for oh, yeah. Because in wrestling, like you're trying to coach someone through something, but you don't know what they're thinking, what yeah. they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then when you yeah, got a baby that can't talk and communicate you those problems, like you're trying to work through it too. Yeah. Change the diaper, feed her, right. do whatever you can. It's like yeah. a progressive yeah. checklist. Yeah. That's fun though, man. I mean, we, we, we I, I keep talking. Uh, I was actually at Mason's school earlier and uh, we did like this lunch thing that they do every year for like, oh, I guess opening day in baseball today. So uh, every year at his school, but I noticed there were a lot of dads in the building. Which, cool. which I thought was really cool. So yeah. as I was walking out, I was walking out with my buddy Matt and his brother-in-law. And I said, like, dude, there's a lot of there's a lot of dads here. And he goes, Yeah, it's and it's awesome. I go, it is freaking awesome, dude. Yeah. You know, the dads that came before us, like my dad was working up in Jersey City yeah. on a Wednesday at 1020. Like what I used to get maybe call it like backsided envy at times towards my wife because she actually has to be at work and I have flexibility. Like I would build all this bullshit up in my mind and be like, why the fuck do I, I, I gotta, uh, this. And, and now like I took Carter to the dentist on Monday and I knew that since I've been feeling better, like I knew I was going to handle it well. The last time I, I was at a, a doctor's appointment, I think I told you about it here. Yeah, Rowan up, was yeah. sitting on my lap. Right. I was an overwhelmed mess. I'm looking at my phone. Now my watch freaking gives me updates on emails and shit. Um, so she was on my lap and she like peed through my threw her stuff onto yeah. my pants. We go into the thing. The lady wasn't giving me great energy. I don't know. It was a fucking mess. So I get to my I, I, I get to my house and my mother in law's there on Monday. So I get to the house and they're both all ready to go. Rowan too. So I, I said, like, you're coming too? Who said that? And I'm thinking mama said like Rowan's coming too. And my mother was like, she said she's coming. So I was like, all right, I'm ready for this. It's fine. I ain't getting fucked up today. I, I did the plunge earlier. Yeah. Like, I got this. So we go into the waiting room and they're going crazy. There's bottles. They're doing bottle flipping. Carter's jumping on the phone. I'm on the phone in the waiting room, which would have gotten me, had I not had personal growth, I would have been a fucking mess. Yeah. So I'm like on the phone. Finally, I'm like, I'm in the waiting, I told, like, I'm in the waiting room at the dentist. Like, I have to call you back. So, like, for, for that moment, I, I got slightly rattled, but I was fine the whole time. But when we left. Yeah, but you had to set that boundary, too, for whoever yeah, you are fine. on the phone which with. is fine. I was, I was talking about Oleg, and I told him, oh. and then he just kept getting into talking. And finally, Carter's jumping on the couch. I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta right. go. But, yeah. you know, I was fine. He, he did great there. But when we left the school today, we were talking about the fact that there were a lot of dads here. The one dad at the table was dressed up for work and he's kind of like a hybrid model where he had nice clothes on because he did like a zoom and you can get stressed about the new way dad, like I used to, or you could just absolutely fucking embrace it. Like this is a huge blessing. Dads before us, no knock on them, but Lex is talking about changing diapers. Changing diapers didn't really go down in the pictures that I saw. Maybe they were. But in the pictures with my the Budweiser's and the cigarettes from the 80s, yeah, right. you know, I don't know. I don't know if the different dad would really do yeah. it. Different so, times. But, but I would go back to that shit like, oh, you know, blah, 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 you know I'm the guy. I'm paying the bills. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, All that fucking self-induced bullshit. No, this stuff is amazing. We get to, and we get, you get the to opportunity enjoy to do this right. stuff. It's funny and you yeah. say that because this morning Mary asked me if I was going to do Donuts with Daddy at the Howell Pal with Josephine. Okay. Now, I did it with Rosalie. Yeah. And it's awesome. And it's all dads there. Right. So, like, for me, now, I've done it with my two girls. I go in. My little girls come running up to me. We sit there. We each have a donut. We hang out. But it's all fathers. Right. Uh, Some grandfathers are there. But it's special. It is special. You get, in a day and age now where the male role is redefined, Mm -hmm. You get to embrace it. Yeah, you know, my dad wasn't it. doing that shit. He was at work. He and wasn't changing you didn't diapers. Want to or anything. He just like the, the world it wasn't was different. The culture, then, really, yeah, it wasn't the culture. You needed yeah. that brick and mortar. Yeah. You had to be there to provide, yeah, and right. that that is an excellent role. Listen, we're I in this can hybrid work just model. as efficiently. Yeah, same. From that, yeah, as I can in my office. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. I get all the emails, all the phone calls, all the text messages. Oh yeah, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter where I am. Oh, it yeah. shaped. You know, my dad was actually. I was kind of fortunate. My dad kind of had that hybrid model because he was a business owner. He had his own okay. construction company. Cool. He had the flexibility. Cool. My dad never missed a practice. He never yeah. missed a match. He coached us in everything he did. Now. Yeah. 
He's, you know, like an old school guy still. Like he, he wasn't changing diapers or anything, but, but he still, never he missed a thing. My father was very my dad that, was too. That That's exactly was, how my dad was. You know, that shaped my career decisions because I knew I wanted to get into finance, but I also wanted the flexibility yep. of being able to do that for my kids because yep. I know how much that means to me now and, and even more so what it meant back then. 100%. And that's, you know, you, I see it now as a coach, like how many kids don't even have one parent in the right? stands. Right, that's yeah. like and what that, Dion talked about on his journey. Yeah, it breaks your heart for those kids because yeah. I know how much that meant for me. I never had to worry about that. Me neither. And never once crossed my mind. And I want that, you know, for my daughter and whatever kids we have down the road, they never have to worry about dad being there or mom 100%. being there. So, you know, that— Family's the most important thing. Yeah, and, you know, I know if I remember it now at 30, you know— I'm going to remember now at 50, 60, and, and that's going to be the same for yeah, my daughter. Exactly. So I don't want her to think about the times I wasn't there. I yeah. want to think about the fact that you were I, there. I can't, you showed you know, up. I want her to say, I can't even think of a time he wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. And that, you know, to me, you could call it, what you know, the new age dad or whatever. At the end of the day, I think it just comes down to the fact that, like, it's more prevalent now, especially in today's society and the way the world is. Like, you need to be there for your kids. Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine like growing up without my dad's influence in my life and my mom's too, especially yep. my mom. It was the uh, unsung hero of the house, you know, packing the cooler for the after weighing. Oh yeah. And you know, she, my dad always says she got the tough job. Like she was yep. the one grinding yeah. at home, yeah. taking care of the house. My dad got to do the fun things and coach. My mom was the right. team mom. Yep. You know, so that sticks with me. And you know, I think, you know, in today's world, like, if you have that influence, your kids are going to be a lot better off, especially with this thing. Though, as great as it is for us as professionals and adults, that's deadly for those kids. Yeah, 100%. You know? Yeah, I know some kids that can't come off an iPad. I know kids. Oh, yeah. Now, my son was a little ahead of the curve with, like, riding a bike. He started when he was, like, uh, just under five. No training wheels. He loves it. Right. I know kids that cannot ride a bike at six years old with or without training wheels. Yeah, they like just they don't know how to do this all day. Yeah, they yeah. they just can't figure out the mechanics of pedaling, bro. Right. Carter, it, it's crazy. Carter is feeling this tablet that he got for Christmas. I mean, my man is straight up yeah. hooked on it. But that's all kids now. Yeah. I know they have know. everything at their disposal. He, he still does do a lot, but you know, I I, I remember waiting tables mm -hmm. and I would, and I wasn't a parent at this time, and I would say like. Oh, like, why are the kids on the tablets? Blah blah blah. Like, why Bro, are the kids the got the thing ever when you're blah, blah, blah. Here's your And then iPad. now my right. kids got it, and I'm like, damn, this thing is addicting. But like, there's this a boy is feeling right. this thing. Well, you don't let your kid sit on the tablet all day. Now I know that because I see your kids out. I see yeah. them doing things. Yeah, winter time made it tough. Dude. It's cold out, you know. Yeah, it's tough as a parent. They're so whining. They they're screaming do. for it. He's obsessed with right. it. It's like, all right, dude, just take it. Yeah, but yeah. And it's hard. I know. I know. Lie. In my house, once it's nice out, yeah, we're good. We can check the changer. iPad. Right. We'll go outside. We'll go yep. for a family walk. Max will be on his bike. Yeah. Rosie will get on her bike with her little and training wheels best. to try and keep up. Like my kids are on a tablet. Yeah. Don't let me get that mistaken. Yeah. But they're not. They're not hooked on a tablet. They're outside doing kid shit. Yeah, right. Straight addiction. You know. I mean, they're they're doing stuff. They're at yeah. the park up the street, climbing on the monkey bars, doing all that. There's kids that just cannot function without a fucking iPad. Yeah. And I crazy. don't get it. Now, how does no one check I, that? I got kids on my wrestling team that are that way with the phone. Yeah. Can't they imagine. they can't put the phone down. They're 17, 18 years old. And they're not even getting, like, their friend's phone numbers. They communicate through Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. I asked one of the kids for uh, one of the new freshmen. He joined late. Yeah. I asked a uh, kid on my team for his number. He's like, oh, I don't have it. I said, you were just you just said you were texting with him. Yeah. He's like, yeah, on Snapchat. Like, you guys don't even get each other's phone numbers. You don't call anyone. Like, time, I was bro. saying, like, that picture that, like, from caveman to human yeah. being, and then there's going to be the picture with the tech uh, neck. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be one where it's like the whole human neck is just going to be facing down oh, the device. Yeah. It's sad. We're headed there, though. It's sad. We it's... came up on flip phones. Right. The next you know? tile brick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Nokia snake. <laughs> right. You know? That was the most indestructible phone, by the way, oh, that Nokia yeah. phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. That thing, yeah. I dropped the shit out of that phone. Right. It never broke. <laughs> right. My iPhone, I drop it from like three feet away, and it shatters everywhere. Oh, I, right. I actually took my case off recently because it got wet, and I noticed the whole back of, the whole yeah, back it's broken. of it is like completely spider uh. red. Uh, but Lex, you, um, like when you were talking about, you know, when you were talking about being down at AC and stuff, like uh, one of the things that I like not coaching at the high school at the moment is like seeing the photos, you know, oh, yeah. seeing the intensity. Um, but there were a few photos of you 
that really captured like all that emotion. Um, and I actually screenshotted one. I, I have it in my phone. I wanted to send it to Ev so he could thumbnail it for us um, for this episode. But I realized very quickly in that photo that that energy and passion looks strikingly similar to Coach Goodell. <laughs> and like when you go to those matches at the rack or like even if you're watching some of the highlights on Instagram or something and like you see like a big takedown or a big moment for them, like that whole bench just erupts. Like yeah. Coach Goodell erupts. Like I remember watching him at Jackson and he had that same type of energy. Uh, what was it like uh, wrestling for him, you know, back then? And like what's it been like seeing this, the program evolve from like then till now? So when I came in – um you know, it was kind of a weird period in Rutgers wrestling. Like, Goodale came in, and I think it was 2007, maybe. So, are you talking and Scotty Winston era? Well, so, Scotty almost? was a senior my freshman. Okay. He was Well, he was a senior in high school, and Goodale got the job. That okay. was Goodale's first recruit. Yep. So, that might have been, what, 08, maybe? And you got Delafab in the mix Yeah, and- so, well, those guys were there. Like, uh, Scotty was a senior, Mario Mason, uh, Dan Rinaldi, Greg Zanetti. Wait, was- was Sidey with you Sidey, at any point? Not Dave, Dan. Dave okay. graduated the year before I okay. got in. So Dan was there. Beverly. Yeah, oh, Bev, yeah. Jay Bev was my roommate. Go, go Cats. Bev was my roommate my freshman year. Cool. We, uh, we come in as freshmen, and they still didn't get the All-American yet. Laid that the was That was the big, uh, you know, monkey on Goodale's back there. He, he was there. He got this number one recruiting class in the country with Winston and all those guys. Right. They're seniors now, and he doesn't have an All-American yet. So, Perseverance, man. Uh, that year, which was my first year there, Anthony Parati ends up breaking through. Okay. Which was the last one anyone expected to okay. do that. Sometimes that's how it goes on the college level. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Parati had a hell of a tournament. He was super competitive, tough as shit, yeah. and ended up breaking through. And that was the ball that rolled. And then after that, Ashnault came in. Now, were you and, with Ashnault at all? Yeah, Anthony okay. was uh, one year behind me. So okay. he came in the year after me. And those guys, like, you know, Goodale and John Leonardis, who was there when yes. I was there, Pollard, um, yes. and then Donnie Pritzloff coming in. Like, those guys, they have that passion that we were talking about earlier. Like, yeah. there was times where they are talking to you, you're like, this guy fucking hates me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not that he hates you. He he, he sees the potential. He sees what he, you, he knows you can be, and you're doing something stupid. But did you stupid. understand that at that time? Probably not. No. Um, that was a – you know what it was, too? Like – I was always the rock star on my team in high yeah. school. Like you now come in, now you're just level. one of the guys. Yeah, yeah you're just a, everyone has they were done. They're all rock stars. Yeah, they've done what you've done yeah. or more. So that's you know that's tough, and and then you're struggling. You're not doing well. You know, I was like 500 my first, no, below 500 my first year, um, and that's you know plays with your confidence yeah, because sure does. I went 42 and one my now senior you're your coach year. Yelling at yeah. you. Right. You know, I went from 42 and one to like 13 and 15 in a matter of, you know, 12 months. Yeah. And um, that's tough. The other <laughs> thing I didn't realize my dad had to kind of put this into perspective for me. Those guys are coaching for their livelihoods. Ain't that the truth? They're putting food on the yeah. table based on how this team performs. Yep. This team does poorly. They're, they're getting out. fired. Yeah. So I didn't really realize that. My dad's like, dude, you're in a business now. Like, yep. yeah, it's still wrestling, but there is – Money on the Big line for these the guys. Line. Big money, on right? The line. So right. I'm actually surprised. Funding that, for programs. All yeah, that. absolutely. I'm I'm glad that somebody at Rutgers or multiple people at Rutgers didn't let lack of hardware deter them from Goody. Because I love the guy. without going through struggle in life, you can't reap the benefits. Like he had to plant those seeds. You guys had to have that, you know, because the way you're describing what Rutgers was like while you were there is very similar to what we experienced at JWU. Not necessarily the lack of All-Americans and different things, but we were kind of laying the foundation. Right. We were the first team that ever won conferences in school history. That kind of allowed for more recruits, more resources, yeah. more more eyes on the program. And like now, like I said, they just took fourth and like – just like you were saying with like your friends and all these close people to you, I was just on the friend with Steve. I was on the phone with Steve Martell the other day for an hour and a half, and we were just talking about like this immense pride that we have. Like, what's it like now, being an alum and seeing where they're at now? Oh, like, I they, mean, they're sending seven this eight, weekend. Eight, eight. Yeah, Golly. it's 
you know, you always, especially because like Rutgers football it hasn't yeah. had the best track record. Like, yeah, we put a lot of pride they had some in good that. Moments though, they did, with, yeah, uh, for what sure. That, what was that running back's name? Uh, right? Oh, uh, well, they had Ray Rice way back, yeah, but then uh, they back. had the kid Pacheco who's Pacheco, on the Chiefs yeah. now. So, uh, but for us, like you know. I'm pretty tight with a lot of those dudes still. And, yeah, we still talk about, like, you know, still follow and, yeah. you know, where they're at. And, you know, it's great to see. Like, you you want to see them break through because now, like, when we were there, we were trying to break through, like, that top 20 level, right? And right. now they're established in that 20 to 10 level. Now yeah. it's like, all right, let's see them get to that top five level. Yep, they're and knocking that, on the door. Yeah, so um, I love what they're doing there. You know, and you, you alluded to it earlier, like, a lot of what I do coaching wise does come from yeah. Goody. Yeah. Like, especially what Goody did so well and he still does well. And that's why I think Rutgers home matches are top five in attendance every yep. year, 5,000 people at the rack every match. He gets the crowd into it. Oh, yeah. So when a big pin comes, he does the hand slap. It's a whole experience, and, dude. So I, uh, Sawyer was wrestling yeah. Loudon Henry. You got the. I um in the corner for Loudon Henry from St. Peter's Prep is one of my best friends from Rutgers, one of my groomsmen, uh, Tony Pafumi. Wait, he, I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Are you talking about that throw that yeah. he had? Okay, yeah, yeah. So Sawyer hits the throw, wins the region title. I do the yes. The next day, Tony and I are texting back and forth, talking like about I the saw match. That alligator he goes, hand. "Don't you ever fucking Goodale clap me again." <laughs> You know what I took from Goodale? See the fall. Did See he ever fall? say that in oh, your yeah. day? I remember hearing him say that when when he was coaching at Jackson Memorial. I yeah. still say it to this day, yeah. man. If the kid is remotely close to this, See the fall. See the fall. Yeah. He, he does a great job of like getting on the refs and like oh, yeah. chirping a little bit. Yep. And yep. you know, he brings good energy, energy, it sounds he, he, like. Great, great energy. And great. I mean, part of packing stands for a collegiate event is providing a, a bit of a performance in a yeah. show. Yeah. So, you know, you could be the most level-headed coach and get no emotion and be great, but to have a successful program, you got to bring people in. 100%. Yeah. So he's got to have that passion. Yeah, so, and now they're in the Big Ten, and you're talking about being on the chopping block, yeah. and like you got to produce. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's, there's a the high, high expectation. Yeah, it's all yeah. on And it, it, it's so great for New Jersey wrestling overall. I mean, this state is so good at the, the you know, at wrestling. Yeah. And, and it there's, makes it easy to go support. Yeah, it's a passionate fan base. Yep. Yeah, and Riders had its ups and downs. Princeton's come a long way in the mm -hmm. last several years. But, you know, Rutgers, the last 10 years especially, 15 years, I mean, that has been the staple of New Jersey wrestling. Yeah. And it's an event. Like, people gather up the family. They drive up Route 18 on a yep. Friday night, yeah. and yep. they go to the rack, and they watch. And not only are they watching a good program in Rutgers, but they're seeing these big names come in, Penn State, Ohio oh, State. Oh, big know. competition. The, For sure. Our first ever Big Ten match was my uh, sophomore year. Iowa. Iowa at the rack, 6,000 people. You know, I get the comp tickets. I got my you know, high school coach a ticket oh, to come yeah. watch Iowa. He's all fired up. Like, it was cool, man. And yeah. then Iowa beats the crap out of us. We're like, yeah, there's man, been a few we're at a different been... level now. Yeah. Hey, well, but now how did you 10, feel baby? approaching that match? So I wasn't wrestling that match. I actually, uh, I sat... I, I actually never really got in the starting lineup because I had a career-ending injury my third year at Rutgers. Yeah. So I uh, redshirted my first year. My second year, I was a backup to Billy Smith, who's one of my I great friends, him. great heavyweight at Rutgers. Um, and then my third year, first day of practice, wrestling Billy had um, got in on a single leg. He sprawled. His knee landed in a puddle of sweat, which, as you know, those wrestling rooms become swamps by the yeah. end of practice. His knee slides out. Ripped everything in my shoulder. Had to rip. It was my uh, third shoulder surgery. I had to have reconstructive surgery. Um, mm. Went to the doctor. The doctor's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't clear you. Um, that's it. And that was that's a hard combo, dude. That was a tough conversation. That's the same um, boy who wanted to be a state champ. Yeah, that's his whole. That's everything. And, and now it's I'm gone. I'm glad you yeah. touched on that. Yeah, same. How did you bounce back from that? <sighs> because uh, that. In all that, in yeah, the, paint this picture a little bit. So, you, that could have fucking crushed you. Give us did. a few, like, like kind of give us a day to day a little yeah. bit there. This was my darkest period of my life. Um, imagine, because bro. the other thing that people don't associate with that is I've been on this team for three years now. Mm -hmm. Those guys are my best friends at school. Yeah. Those are people I hang out with. I'm living in a wrestling house, yeah. and now I'm no longer on. on the, you know, I'm a part of the team, but yeah. I'm no longer on the team, essentially. Yeah. I And my identity for my life was a wrestler. That's it. 
So now I got into like a dark place. Okay. I, uh, you know, Friday night rolls around, Thursday night rolls around, big party night for college. I don't have practice the next day, but all these guys do. Right. But the problem is all these guys, all the people I go out with are these guys. Right. I got no one to go out with. That's so. how I felt when I was academically ineligible. I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. but you're painting the picture of me living in a wrestling house. All my friends have weigh-ins. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sitting here like I'm a fucking loser. Yeah. You know? I, I felt... That had a wear on both of you. Yeah, yeah it yeah, did. But- and none of these guys ever made me feel outcasted by any means. It wasn't no, like, you fuck put it you, on you're yourself. a part of the team. You did that to you. Yeah. But, you know, that was a reality that these dudes are flying out to Iowa for a Friday night match, and I'm in the house by myself till Sunday. Yeah. Yep. So, and I, I Left have, alone with your thoughts. And yeah. my friends outside of wrestling are other athletes who are doing right. the same thing. They're doing the same so shit. They're on the I baseball ended up, team. They got practice. I ended up going home like every weekend for okay. like a semester because okay. I had nothing to do. I what was going on at home? Like just anything to bad? Like, no, just, kinda, I, I, just, just to get away. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm sitting in this house by myself and, you know, my parents are there. And, you know, I go home, hang out with them, you know, sleep in my own bed. Like, what am I going to do? Sit in the college house, you know, yeah, all night. And, was there anything that helped you, like, break the cycle of that? Um, Yeah. Yeah, there was. So I ended up um, kind of losing my way a little bit. My grades slipped a lot, too, I'm because sure. it just kind of, like, got me in a yeah. gutter. That wrestling discipline keeps you dialed in the classroom, and and, and there's people monitoring yeah. your grades and everything, too. Once you're out of yeah. that, it's like, I got all the time in the world, and you you don't utilize the time well. You don't have the accountability anymore. Yeah, so, it's on yeah. you. Right. So I still had that sort of deal where they let me be a part of the team still. Like, I got all the perks of being on the wrestling team. Solid. Deal was I had to keep my GPA up. Right. My GPA ended up slipping. I had like a 2 that semester. I get a call from John Leonardis over, you know, spring break. He's like, Lex, like, dude, we can't have you on the team, man. Like, so then it's all taken away. So at that point there, I like was gone. Didn't like get into anything bad. I just like didn't want to leave my room. Like, like, that's numb, yeah. You were probably yeah. uh, I was circling depressed. depression. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to class. I was coming back and I sat in my bed and played Xbox literally until it was time to go to sleep. And what were you like, Madden, like yeah, Madden stupid like shit, you know, two K, whatever, yeah, and uh, just so, fucking wasting time. Yeah, like literally just waiting for the day to end, right. and then it's a tough place to be, man. But you, it, it doesn't have to a dark. A, a dark time doesn't have to lead to substance abuse. Yeah, for you to have struggles, right? Yeah. Like depression is a very real thing, absolutely. And I think substance abuse is a coping technique people use to manage depression, right? Which so ultimately makes it worse. Makes it worse. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. So, like, all right, bro, you had some depression, but at least you were controlled enough to not resort to other shit that would have just kept, you know, kept you going. Yeah, I'm, uh, I used to be, I'm not this way anymore. Um, I used to be the guy that if, you know, instead of, like, coping with, like, drugs or alcohol, it was, like, just shutting down and staying in my room and not talking to anyone. I get it. Like, that was... At times, and I see Mason shutting down. Yeah. He'll have the same posture. Like, when I just, like, shut down, I'm not saying anything. And then I'll be like, fuck, he learned that from me. Like, he's got his head down, his shoulders down. He's not saying a word. That's learned behavior from me. Yeah. yeah. When I get overwhelmed and shit, like, I'm not, I don't freak out on anybody. I just shut like, down. I'm Leave similar, it in my own thoughts. I'm similar to Matt. Uh, Trost told us last week. Like his wife will find him on the floor in the bathroom, just right, like your body over. Just yeah. Done. yeah, like my body will shut down, right. and maybe not to the extremes that he does, but like I'm already running on shitty sleep, mm-hmm. getting better, of course. But shitty sleep already. Now I'm stressed. Now I'm, I'm, you know, dealing with some mental shit, bro. I just like I get to the point where like I need a day of sleep. Yeah, right. a day of yeah. sleep. Just saying. unbothered, unrattled, just. Shut the phone off and just bounce back. I was saying in our first few episodes that that used to happen to me on Saturdays yeah. where my body would just be done, right. dude, just out cold. But Abby, like, Abby recognized that. She did. You know, and- I haven't done that in a long time. I actually napped last Friday. Work got just, you know, when your mind's just oh, going, yeah. going, going, and like you're just physically done, like that, that happened to me. But I set my timer for 20 minutes and I bounced back. But prior to me falling asleep, Abby was trying to tell me a bunch of stuff and I just gave her like nothing. Yeah. yeah. And I passed out and woke up and I was like, tried to apologize. And she's just like, all right, dude. <laughs> Bro, shit gets stressful. <laughs> it does. And like, 
you know, we, we've discussed it here. Like, well, who am I supposed to go to when I'm stressed as fuck? I mean, now yeah. I could call you. I could call Lex. I'm sure he'll answer the phone and it won't be a sales pitch for insurance or if I, like, he'll listen. Yeah. Right, 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 but like, right, right. up until now, I didn't have those tools. No. So like, I maybe would get you to, didn't even you maybe you didn't even realize that I the didn't tools know were, yeah, yeah. It, that, that they right. were a benefit. I wasn't taught that. Yeah. I was taught just fucking deal with it. Well, that like, was my problem. Power through. Yeah. That was my that's problem. Probably why you didn't time. want to say anything. Yeah, that's why you're I sitting did. in bed playing yeah. fucking Xbox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I was always like kind of a <laughs> playing fucking Xbox. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, I mean you're not dealing with life. Well, you're and just fucking escaping. The one thing where I said earlier, like, my dad has that old school mentality. It was like, you, life's hard, you fucking yeah. deal with it, and you move on. Exactly. And that was kind of my mindset. Like, it wasn't a thought of going to therapy or, yeah. like, talking to anyone or even, like, I didn't even tell my parents. My parents were like, well, why are you home so much? I'm like, I got nothing to fucking do up there. Yeah. Like, I'm just coming home, see you guys, hang out, whatever. And, um, yeah, like, I've come a long way from that where um, my wife and probably is the one that really got me out of it. I actually met her or I knew her in high school. But we, like, got introduced to each other at that pe point in my life. She was going to Udell. Um, she was mutual friends with um, my best friend's girlfriend. And we got hooked up and, you know, just really kind of came out of my shell. She was, like, the first girl that, like, I, like, really... I don't want to say opened up to, but like wasn't afraid to kind of be myself or put that's on a show. Awesome. Do you think that's because you were in such a dark place at that moment that you were so vulnerable? You were in such a dark place you were willing to be so vulnerable and actually show her the real Lex. I think it was actually, I think being in that mindset did kind of play a factor, yeah. but, but more so from the effect of like, I got nothing got going on. Lose, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, this is me, take it or leave it. Yeah, and, that's it. And like, you know, really like she started like, you know, the more we got to know each other, the more we started hanging out and I'm kind of going through it. She's like, you all right? Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm Not fucking really. miserable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, uh, everything I've ever worked for was taken from me. My career was cut before I ever knew it would be. Everything I identified as is gone. Yeah, well, and the, the whole way I painted this college experience, it's the complete opposite right now. Yeah, uh, so it was tough. And, yeah. like, you know, you're coming home, too, and that was, like, probably the worst thing for me was coming home because, like, I'm seeing people around town. They're like, oh, how's wrestling going? I'm like, it's fucking not. That's yeah. kind of why I was asking about what was going on at home because sometimes when you're – Away from college, and you do come home. Like I thought, maybe there was a party scene going on down no, there. No, not you, really. It was more, yeah. I'm like lucky where my I have a group of friends. We have been friends since kindergarten, and like we've been the same five friends. That's great. No one's entered our circle. No one's left our yeah. circle. You guys but, got the group tax going? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they're all <laughs> oh yeah all super successful guys. That's I awesome. mean, one's an accountant in uh, out in California. One's a big time accountant in Philly. One's an engineer. Graduated from Stevens. My other buddy, he's Damn, dog. high up You're in Cintop. Smart table. No, we were like the athletes that just also kind of did the right thing. There and like, That's we right. always knew when to, because I'm not going to like sit here and be like, I didn't party in right. high school, but I was very aware of okay. it. Like I was very um, conscious of my goals. So yeah. Yeah. I didn't drink during football. I didn't drink during wrestling season. Yeah. Come springtime. Yeah. All bets are off. That's we stay disciplined, though. Yeah. So and that's what athletics breeds that. 100%. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of kids, it does not. Mm -hmm. Not all kids, yeah. but it teaches you accountability. You have to be self-aware, especially yeah. a sport like wrestling. The only person to blame is you. So, like, if you were out getting hammered before a match, oh yeah, what the fuck was going to happen? Yeah, right. I, I then mean, you can't hide on a wrestling match. No, you can hide on a football field. You There's can't hide a on a wrestling match. Time, which could be utilized in many different ways, but I was saying like, there's a lot of free time as just like a quote unquote regular college kid. Without any athletics or yeah. anything oh. that you're a part of, yeah, you know, even if it's whatever, just something. The anything, band yeah. is anything to keep you somewhere at some time. And I think it's very similar in high school, where I remember I was always kind of aware of what was going on around me, and like my gut kind of told me to stay away from certain people. And like the ones that didn't have to be anywhere, the, like those are the ones getting in trouble. And yeah, I'm not saying yeah. just sports. I'm just saying, like, literally anything. 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 Chess club, the whatever. The chess club, yeah. art club, like, band, Any like I said, anything. When you don't have, you have nothing but time. So now you get out of school at 2.30, 3 o'clock. 
You go to bed at 11. You're going to sit you in bed eight and play hours. Xbox right. all afternoon. You're like, what are you doing in that eight hours? Dude, at least it's going to have to be a practice for two hours. Yeah, that's got, got you somewhere. And oh, then, yeah. okay, now you got to make weight. All right, now you got that. Now you got your homework. So you now keep your grades you right. got the same eight. Maybe you go to bed a little bit earlier, yeah. too. You got that same eight, but a lot of those are being time blocked that maybe you can get the video games in or whatever but the, else, but it's not the whole eight, yeah. you know? And the production that you're getting out of that time is more. So if you had nothing to do, you're just going to go home, do nothing, whatever it is, maybe get in trouble, maybe not. Mm -hmm. You have somewhere to go and somewhere to be. You're going to accomplish tasks. If you're going to football practice or wrestling practice, baseball practice, you're learning life skills on that field. You're learning life skills on that mat. It's a more productive time. Yeah. You got to get these tasks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know your window to get something done. It has to be done by this day. And I have X amount of hours to do it between school and club practice or school and wrestling. And, you know, um, yeah, I mean, that athletics were how I kept my whole life organized. Everything yeah. I did revolved around my athletic schedule. And then especially come college, like college is so regimented. You are on a legit schedule from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. We were 7 a.m. lift, 8.30 breakfast, 9.30 class, you know, um, had lunch around 12, another class at 1, practice at 3, study hall at 6, in bed by nine. Yeah. Like that's every day. Yep. Now all that's taken away and all you're left with is two classes a day. Oh, hey. And you're, it's, you know, three hours of my day. Like yeah. what the now fuck else am I supposed to do? 20 year old to figure out how to time block their right. day. Uh, yeah. And how to stay out of trouble while doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that helped me was by then I was so far into my college career that like my friends were doing all that. So I didn't have the ability to just, like, go out with, like, yeah. a group of frat guys. Like, I, w- I wasn't even interested in doing that. Like, I w- if I was going to party, I wanted to do it with my buddies and have yeah, fun with, with them. And, you know, like, yeah. you know how it is growing up in that wrestling house. Like, you're going through some shit together yeah. from a maturity standpoint, oh, from an athletic standpoint. You're all growing. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, you're all doing it together and you're, like, yeah. witnessing. You're listen- witnessing your buddies, like, have girl problems and, right. like, Everything. all this, you know, all this problems. stuff. And you're realizing that you're not the only one that has those problems, oh, yeah. too. Sometimes so. feeling better about yourself because yeah. of it. Like, fuck, I'm handling it a lot better than he is, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, oh, definitely. And you get a lot of perspective on what other people from different parts of either the state or right. the country are going through or have gone through. Oh, yeah. Coach Morris has... The wrestlers every year before the season starts, like, tell the whole group about hardships that they've been through. So it's like you just met these 40 kids. The kid could be from, you know, the Midwest. Right. He comes out here and he tells his story, you know, to somebody that grew up in the suburbs. Their parents are still together. You're listening to that and you're like, holy crap. You know, that's my guy now. Like, yeah, now right. I know more of his story outside of just wrestling. Oh, and yeah. I, I think that's awesome what Coach Morris does. That's actually, like, the perfect icebreaker, too. Like, I might think that you got it all together on the surface, and I might have some animosity to it. Yeah, but I might have some animosity towards you mm-hmm. because of that. Like, yeah. oh, here's calm, cool, collected Pete. Oh, and then yeah. you stand up and you share a struggle. All right, Pete's like a real person now. Yeah. Let me talk to Pete. Let me talk right. to Lex. We can find some common ground in that. For oh, sure. Yeah. If I didn't get to know Pete the way I have over the years, like, just seeing you from the outside in, like, that dude's got everything going on. Yeah. Like, he's happy as shit all the time. And then, then I gave you guys an inside track, And then you talk man. to him, but yeah. then vice versa with Billy. Yeah. You meet Billy, you're like, this dude looks like he wants to punch me in the face. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, I, I don't understand you, why this happens. You find out he's, like, the most yeah. charitable guy, involved in everything, yeah. wants to help everyone yeah. out. So Positive yeah. Pete was an anxious mess. Billy the softy uh, <laughs> under the surface looks like he's ready to headbutt somebody. Yeah. And I, he's ready to give his last dollar to anybody. I recently found out that my neighbor's wife thought I was completely unapproachable and was deathly afraid of me. <laughs> you got that. You got that. Jacks from Sons of Anarchy look going, dude. They I don't got know, the man. Tattoos now. Oh, I was yeah. thinking, dude, my sister sent me a picture yesterday. I almost screenshot it to you. It said, your family's already disappointed in you. Just get the other tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> oh, I gotta be honest. I'm seriously <laughs> recontemplating the whole tattoo thing. I mean, oh, yeah. so in the last year. That's why you got long sleeves on? Sleeved, half sleeve, my legs are done, and my chest is done. Bro, this last chest thing. Chest did, yeah. Bro, three months. I have this fucking staph infection in my fucking chest. I've been on antibiotics. I don't know if I'll ever get another tattoo. If I do, I might do a face tattoo. 
No, you're not. I might. I want to get joking. my. I kind of want to get my kids' initials under my eye. <laughs> And you're talking about being unapproachable by your neighbor in suburbia Bro, over here, dude? You, think I, you got a face so hold on, hear me out. To you no, 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 hold on. Hear me out. Get out of here. I'm in like a fucked up spot in life right now. Yeah, like, well, don't let your fucked up shit get, get a But that's how I got all of these all because right, well, I was irrationally that. thinking. I don't know. I want to face that. You kids' names on your face, bro? Yeah, I mean, we could remove it at some point. <laughs> they have a laser. I told my mom the other day, I said, don't worry, these are all going to come off. 26 weeks right now, and you've been doing so good. Dude. I'm glad this is the episode this came <laughs> out. Of. I had this conversation with my wife this well, weekend. How did I was go like, with her? She's probably like, just no do way, you, boo. Do no, you, boo. No, 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 no. She told me absolutely not. She's and like, I, like, yeah, I say like, it yeah, half in jest, but like, I would do that. And then I hear people like, Lex... Upstanding citizen looking at me like I'm going to punch people in the fucking face. Without the face tat. <laughs> Without the face tat. Right. So, like, Yo, I appreciate I see you the now, kickback to reality. Like, I see you now straight up, no face tat. Looking at you, you may have done time in the past. You get a face tat. I'm doing Everyone time who every sees you, day you, you inside time. my mind. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we sit here and we talk about, like, all this men's mental health stuff and coping techniques and all that. But the truth is shit gets dark, right? Yeah. yeah. And, like... It's not all fun and games, and, like, we could sit here and be like, oh, you don't feel good, uh, try and go do some push-ups. Try and do this, try and do that. Mm -hmm. For me, like, the last week and a half, I've been, like, in a funk. I'm not feeling great, but my kids. This is the biggest right. joy, no matter how I feel. And you'll realize this if you... So you realize it now, because... Oh, yeah. Eight, how old? Eight, eight months? Eight months, yeah. All right, life. so when you get to the point where you walk in the door and you have a... I got three kids. You have all three of them running up, giving daddy a hug. All they want is daddy. Right. It's like unconditional. So like, yeah, push-ups are cool. Cold plunge is cool. But like the best medicine for me is just an undeniable kiss from one of my little girls oh, or a yeah. big hug from Max. And like coping techniques are cool, but you got to learn to value the time you got with your family. Because for me, I, I prioritize work over my family for a very long time. Okay. And it's probably why I'm in the position I'm in, like, mental health-wise. But we're doing pretty good. I mean, I found a great balance in the last 26 weeks. Okay. So I don't question them, even though yeah, you I'm might. Just playing, I'm just playing, Because dude. of my joke about my no, face I'm tag. joking, dude. You come but, a long-ass way. It's been amazing to yeah, see. Yeah, but we all, just we all have. That. Yeah. You could tell me you haven't? Yeah. I mean, look at you. You're cold punching twice a day. You've gotten rid of the majority of your anxiety by Which figuring out a huge. recipe for you. Yeah. And I'm getting there. And when I say, you know, I'm in a fucked up spot a little bit the last week, I don't mean, like, shit yeah, is terrible. overall, right. just, just like, not, you know, I'm in a funk. Yeah, in a yeah. funk, yeah. You know, I don't is. feel great. I got this infection for fucking yeah. three months. I got to have surgery right. now. It's a lot. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you now. You're a young father. I know that you kind of took to this a little bit because you were a young dad and we were talking about parenting and stuff. Yeah. Bro, just take the time when, when your kid kids get older. Just be there and be in the moment. You and will. don't yeah. let all that shit that's going on in the real world affect yeah. your relationship with your children. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. nothing else matters. No, for right. sure. Uh, I get to, uh, I'm fortunate enough now where she is at the point where, like, I walk in the door and her face lights up. Oh, well, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. about to experience that in, like, 20 minutes, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's right literally, now. not right now. It's so special. It is overwhelming, though. I'm not going to lie. I got super overwhelmed last night. We were doing, uh, Mason needed help with his homework. Rowan kept screaming for daddy. Rowan's been doing this thing that's been bothering me with Abby while while I'm not home. She's like, she's with Abby. She wants Abby to hold her, all these things. Once I get home, she's giving Abby this beef, like, just daddy, just daddy. And she's like, daddy's it girl. festers in my belly, though. I'm like, she birthed you. Yeah, like, that's but, what's going on in my mind. Like, but, but she then, needs like, her father, too, bro. Yeah. No, 100%. You know? I, I was just yeah. saying, like, so, like, when I walk in the door, it's about to be screams coming at me. It's it's so amazing if you embrace it. But it can also be I have felt the overwhelmingness of it Would in the mean? past. Just like you have chose yeah. work in the past. I have gotten like, whoa, this is a lot. And my like my phone's blowing off, the emails, like, uh, right. You know, now let me like, ask you, would second, you walk but, outside to take that phone call instead of dealing with the stress in the house with the three kids? Cause I would have a year ago. If I walked in and the kids are going wild, work's calling me. I'm going back outside to take that phone call. 
Right now, what's about to happen is I got to catch up on some stuff that I just missed. I'm going to ch- hopefully hammer everything home before I get home. Abby's going to get her haircut. Um, by the time she gets back, I'll try to reconnect. Yeah, but, um, but you're going to walk in and you're going to enjoy. Exactly. Even if it's pure chaos, you're going to embrace that moment. The calm and the chaos. Because yeah. you've learned, learned to. Exactly. Exactly. And that's another thing with me, like kind of falling on hard mental times and explaining to you guys in those days how overwhelmed and everything I was and pinpointing these things like I wouldn't be where I'm at today without the struggle. So my four minute twice a day gratitude prayer plunges every day. I bring up the struggles every day. I bring up anxiety, the seizures, depression, overwhelmingness, the weight of the world on my shoulders. Like, thank you for that. Like, if it wasn't for that, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And, like, thank you for pulling this anxiety Gave you the out of me somehow. You right. You know? Well, I mean, you fucked with enough different mixes of prayer and cold plunge. You found it. You And you were able to... How long has it been that you feel like the, the double plunge is helping you? What's it? Uh, like a be, month? Going on a month? About a month. Close it's pretty good. Month. And, I mean, anxiety has dissipated. Which you're double amazing. plunging. You're grateful every day which is all stuff dave seidenberg talked about you know the, yeah. the gratitude and stuff like I that i just asked matt for dave's number i'm gonna hit him up yeah get, you uh, should get some yeah, insight from him i sent him my stuff, intake paper, yeah. paperwork he's in upstate new york the rest of this week but we're gonna connect next week cool. and he's gonna wind up coaching yeah. me i've been doing uh i've been doing the cold plunge every day for like three months now yeah Oh my God, it's, dude! I I have to stop myself from not getting in it at night because I'm so excited for the next. Bro, morning. you make me feel like yeah. such a pussy. You don't like it? I Bro, added I, in the second it's not one. Not that I don't like dude. it. I don't know if there's oh like God. adverse effects I, like overall. Like I don't know if it's like my testosterone is getting lower or if like these these other things. But I found I I started utilizing that window, and that really? window at night keeps me more calm. Really? Yeah. I go in first thing I do when I How wake up. Do you do? Three minutes every day. My How wife, my wife does there? it with me. That's amazing. Um, she uh, first day I went in three minutes right off the bat. There I've been doing it. three minutes since. My wife does three minutes now. She started at a minute. She's so built so her way up. Um, I'm a minute and a half. That's the dude, most I got in me. I we had a uh, issue at my house. I had a uh, a pipe burst down low that connected to my outside spigots so i just drained the plunge because it was supposed to freeze the night before i didn't want a giant chunk of ice yeah, right. i was going to fill it up the next morning i go to fill it up i hear the pipe burst in my Ooh. crawl space i'm like shit so it was out of commission for two weeks the every day we talked about how we can't wait to get it back so morgan's been getting in every day that's amazing dude i go in for three i come out dry off put my sweats on i come out she wants me out there with her to like keep her mind distracted yeah. for the first minute she goes in three minutes yeah yeah Dude, i it, put on uh sam fisher it's called the city city's gonna break my heart that's vibe. in the background and i just talk out loud and like just like you guys have been Great friends for me to just voice things out. Like, I was talking to Ev last night about kind of, like, talking some things out with, like, no one's opinion. Like, I, I hated in the past when I would, like, either, like, talk about, like, how I was feeling or, like, and then you get, like, these rebuttals from somebody yeah. else. Like, bitch, you don't right. fucking know me like that. My and, feelings like, are my feelings. Let me just feelings. say right. it. Yeah. Let me just get this shit off my yeah. chest. Like, I'm not looking for you to... Tell me I'm fucking up. I know I'm fucking up. Like, I'm not right. looking for you to tell me I shouldn't have done that. Like, anything that's coming back in that echo, there is no echo. Yeah. You just get I'm it out. I'm already saying it. And, like, like Ev's been praying back. before bed. And he says, like, he felt bad that he'll be, like, mid-prayer and fall asleep. But I'm like, no, dude. Dave said that whatever we're thinking about right before bed is going to be a direct reflection when we wake up in the morning. So fall asleep during your prayer. Wake up in that better state of mind, opposed to where we've been in the past, which is sheer things that happened in 93. What's going to happen in two months? (laughs) Do I have this? Do I have that? Do I have those money? Does anybody like me? Like Whatever that crazy stuff going on before bed. Of course we woke up anxious. You say it, too. Of course we woke up anxious, though. But we didn't know. I mean, it's... We have we have this powerful human brain and we have more control of it than sometimes I think we think we give ourselves credit for, but but we got way more self awareness now and we're yeah. cool. We come to terms with like, hey, this is how I roll. Yeah, and when you I'm know? fucking up, I know I'm fucking up. Yeah. Like you said, like I'm very well aware if I'm doing something stupid, I know it's stupid. Yeah. Just right. let me fucking go with it. Let, let me express it. that I know yeah. I'm fucking up. Just leave me alone. Don't tell me like my wife's gotten really good about it. Like if I do something stupid. Just let me say, yeah, I fucked up. Poor choice. We're good. 
Don't fucking harp on it. I For already sure. know. <laughs> I already know. Yeah, I hear you. I know that. Well, I mean, this has been a great time talking with Lex, dude. You hit us with some really, really good stuff. I wasn't sure. I was talking to Morello yesterday, and I was like, I don't know what Le- like Lex is the man, but like he doesn't get rattled ever. Like he's just so calm, and he's like the duck. He's like, no, nah, he is, but I'm sure he's gonna have something for you. I'm like. I know he will. I just don't know enough about it. Yeah. I don't know enough about yeah. I, you, know. you stay so even keeled, bro. Yeah, I but that's one to. of the best qualities you can have yeah. in life. Is- yeah, but he's the duck like you, yeah. bro. He's straight bugging. Listen, I don't think- be <laughs> like me though, because yeah. for me, obvi- apparently. It manifests in like an angry <laughs> face. Like at least you got a good smile. Yeah, you're personable. You got the look going. You got me, the blazer on. Apparently, no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> no, 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 no. And That's you know not what? True, Anybody Billy. who's afraid to talk to you, they got their own problems going down. Yeah. And once yeah. they talk to you, they're instantly gonna know. Just like I instantly knew. I, I, I never judged you at, at, at what you, you know, never looked. No, but apparently, a oh. lot of people do. No, but it's on that, bro. Yeah. So when I Fuck first em. met you, we had our golf out. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm uh, an amazing golfer too. That was an experience. But I've gotten a lot better. I know. Well, and I, I owe you around the golf. Yeah. Well, I know everything that I do wrong that yeah. I can't change. Yeah. So I tell everybody just to do the opposite of what there I do. There you go. But I told Pete, I said, listen, you know, I said you got open invitation to guests. Who he said, who do you want me to bring? I said, good person. That's it. And from the moment you and I started talking, I knew you were a great guy. Yeah. Uh, and getting to know you and you know, obviously Pete and I, our friendship grown over the years, you know, super thankful for you guys and uh, really appreciate you having me on. You free today. tomorrow? Of course, buddy. Of I'm course, free. buddy. I owe you well, a we gym session. We never made that happen last week. I don't know if I can do one. What time are you going? Us. You tell me if you could do one, but we also have to have a meeting anyway. So All you right, tell me what get, time we could do we that. When we get off here, I'll check my calendar. Right. And uh, I mean, I'll, either way, you don't have to come to the gym, but we do have to sit down and go over Beautiful. My future. So beautiful. Sounds good, buddy. Let's go. Let baby. me know. All right, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, click the links, like, share, all the support we could get. We'd appreciate it. Um, anybody's got any questions, comments, shoot us an email. Click the links. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Good job, Lex.